This video is on periodic trends of your periodic table. So before I start looking at the trends, a good way to be able to see how the trends work is to first draw a sketch of your periodic table. So there's a little bit of space um, in the bottom of your notes here. I would sketch my periodic table here. Once you've sketched your periodic table, you want to make the Bohr models of the atoms for four different elements. First being lithium, and then cesium, fluorine, and neon. All four of these have very different char characteristics um, based on their size, number of energy levels, and where their electrons are. So we have lithium, which is in our second energy level. Its first energy level is filled, two electrons. Second energy level has one electron in it. All the way down at the bottom, in energy level six, in period six, still in group one, we have cesium. It's energy level six, so there's six rings, six energy levels. Excuse me. All under from one through five are completely filled with their electrons. Group uh, energy level five has 18 electrons in it. And its outermost energy level six has just one electron. As we go across, we have fluorine. Fluorine has, again, two rings because second energy level. First one being filled with two. Second one has seven, so it just needs one more to be completely filled. Whereas neon is part of my noble gases, it has both its first and second energy levels completely filled. So all the electrons are paired um, and happy there. So before we start into the trends, which things you want to take a look at is, what do you notice about just the overall trends of the size of the atoms. What's happening as we go down our group and across our period? Okay. What about the number of energy levels? Again, as I go down my group and across my period. I'm adding as I'm going down my group, and they're staying the same as I go across my period. And what about the electrons? Where are they? How many do they have? Again, as I go down my group and across my period. These three Questions will help you identify and understand the four different trends. We're going to go over the first three in this video, and then the second one on um, ionic radius will be in the next video. Right. So referring back to my sketch, because that really holds all the answers, I'm first going to discuss my atomic radius. To review it as AR, which is the size of my atom. So my group trend, as I go down my group, I'm adding energy levels. Notice that my lithium only has two energy levels, cesium has six. It's gotten huge as I go down. Therefore, my atom gets bigger as I add more and more energy levels to it. So, looking at group one of lithium, rubidium, and potassium, which one has the highest atomic radius? Well, as we go down, we get bigger atoms. So we put our finger on lithium, rubidium, and potassium and see which one is the furthest down, which is rubidium. Okay. Then my periodic trend. So going across my period, as electrons are added into the same energy level, there is a stronger pull to the nucleus, which draws electrons closer. Therefore, an atom gets smaller because it wants to keep adding more electrons. It's going to start pulling them closer and closer together. So therefore, it actually gets smaller as I go across my period. So fluorine is going to be smaller than lithium. And here, when I ask for what's my lowest atomic radius between beryllium, nitrogen, and fluorine, I locate all three, beryllium, nitrogen, and then fluorine. And whichever is the farthest to the right is going to have the smallest atomic radius. So I circle fluorine. Next one being ionization energy, abbreviated as IE. This is the energy required to remove an electron from the outermost energy level. So how difficult is it for me to pluck that outermost electron away from the atom? Well, as I go down my group, my outermost electron becomes further and further away from the nucleus, and therefore not held onto as tightly. All my inner electrons shield the pull of the nucleus on the outermost electron, therefore my ionization energy decreases. So put that into play, which of these has the highest ionization energy, lithium, rubidium, or potassium? So which one's going to be the hardest to pull that electron away from? Well, we look, we have lithium at the top of the group, rubidium's at the bottom, potassium in the middle. Well, lithium has its outermost electrons very close to the nucleus, 
Whereas rubidium is very, very far away, therefore my nucleus doesn't pull on that outermost electron anymore, at least not very much. Therefore, the one that's going to be hardest to remove an electron from is lithium. My periodic trend for ionization energy going across my period, my atoms get smaller and the nucleus can pull harder on the outermost electron. Therefore, my ionization energy increases. It wants one more electron so bad and it'll put up quite the fight if you try to pull one away from it. So, beryllium, nitrogen, and fluorine, same as before. I locate those three, beryllium's here, nitrogen, and then fluorine is next to it. Well, which one's going to be the hardest to remove an electron from? Well, the smallest one's going to be hardest to remove it from because it wants to hold on to that electron. Therefore, fluorine's going to have the highest ionization energy. Finally, we have electronegativity, abbreviated as EN. This is the ability of the atom to attract electrons. So this is from the atom looking out at the electrons and how badly it wants one more. So as I go down my group, the atoms get bigger and the nucleus is more shielded by more energy levels with electrons. So those energy levels that encompass my nucleus have plenty of electrons inside of them. Therefore, they are pulling on those electrons and not the ones further away from it. So the nucleus cannot attract more electrons, therefore my electronegativity decreases, or the want of electrons decreases. This is true except for my group of noble gases. These, they all have their octet is full, and therefore they do not want any more electrons, so all of them have an electronegativity of zero. So looking at group number one, I have sodium, potassium, and francium. Which one of these has the highest electron electronegativity? Which of them has the most want of one more, or excuse me, the most want of an electron? Well, we look at the size, looking at the group, they get much bigger at the bottom compared to smaller at the top. The smaller one at the top is going to be able to pull on that electron because that outermost electron is closer to the nucleus. Therefore, sodium is going to be having the highest electronegativity. My periodic trend as I go across my period my atoms again get smaller. So I want the electron, or they want the electron more to fill their octets. They're so very close, and as they go farther and farther to the right across the periodic table, closer and closer to filling those uh, spaces for the electrons to end up having an electron configuration like a noble gas. Therefore, the electronegativity increases. In fact, fluorine is the most electronegative element on the periodic table. So whatever elements are closest to fluorine are going to have the highest electronegativity. So if I'm looking for the lowest electronegativity, that's going to be the element that's furthest away from fluorine. So here I have lithium, aluminum, and fluorine. I know that fluorine has the highest electronegativity. Aluminum is closer than lithium to fluorine. Therefore, lithium is going to have the lowest electronegativity. Okay. We're going to be doing a lot of practice with these. The biggest thing is to look at the size and does it want an electron or does it not want an electron? And that will help you walk yourself through these.